Welcome and thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be mixing ink tens blocks with watercolour. Last week in my class that I have here in the studio we were looking at figure drawing and I did this um, little drawing here. In the class I just put some watercolour on it and I was just doing it tonally, just trying to see where the shadows were. Um, after the ladies had left and it was still very wet, I had a bit of a play with it and I added extra watercolour, a lot more water and then I decided I wanted to go darker and as I got my ink tense blocks out and put some more deeper shadows in using that and I really love the way that those ink tents sort of melt on the paper um, when the paper's very wet. So there, obviously there are different ways you can use the ink tense blocks, some of which I've showed you before. Um, but in this little tutorial today, I want to talk about just using them very wet in wet with the watercolour to get some really vibrant colour and get some dark shadows as well. And I've just chosen to do a little um, cockerel because he's got such nice bright colours which sort of lend themselves to the ink tent. So we'll have a go with that. But just sort of this idea again, no detail, keeping it really loose, but just getting a lot of colour um, and contrast in there, contrast between the lights and darks and getting those really nice bright colours in. So that was the idea for today. Um, I hope it goes okay. Let me know what you think. Um, I'll try and talk through it as I'm doing it, but I might just speed it up in, in areas. But the main thing is to try and keep your paper nice and wet add spray if it's drying out um, because like I say they sort of melt those um, ink tents when you put when you put the blocks into the, the wet paper so it's it's good fun so it's something you just really want to get stuck into and have a play with okay so I hope you enjoy the video uh, and thank you for watching okay so I've just done a little quick drawing of a cockerel um, I've done him in pencil that he'll show up for the camera you might wish to do him in pencil the good thing about the pen is it does just give us a little bit extra detail around his face to give us his, his eye in the centre there. Uh, I know we said we weren't doing a lot of detail but you really do need his little face to, to show us who he is. Okay and it's obviously uh, not a water soluble pen, it's a permanent pen so that I can go over the top of that with plenty of water. So I'm just going to start and uh, do some background but I'm just quite loosely, not covering the whole paper, leaving some bits of paper um, dry. And into that I'm going to pop some new gamboge. Try and make it a nice bright painting. And I think a little bit of blue and I'm going to go for some cerulean blue which goes really quite nicely with the gamboge and if you see where they mix together they make a lovely green and I will just go into those negative spaces there of his little crown just to give him a bit more definition around the face there Everywhere else I'm going to leave quite loose, but just with that little bit of detail in his face. Makes a, can you see what a lovely green this is making here, greeny grey. And just in a couple of places I'll put a bit of extra pigment in to give a bit more depth to that colour. And the same with the gamboge actually, it's a little bit extra in places. cover his feet as well. Okay so a nice loose background there and then we'll get like a smaller brush and start and paint him in himself. So for his tail it's quite a, a bluey green so we're going to mix an emerald green With a little bit of blue. Gives us a nice rich colour for his tail. A 
if we just flick that over at the end when we get to the end that's going to give us those feathers and leave that quite loose and again it has this same colour underneath here and a little bit further up on his chest and actually around here as well and then I'm going to mix some pink, some alizarin, crimson into that gamboge to give us this orangey colour that the rest of his body is And let that merge into that turquoisey colour there. And I'm actually going to use a bit of those two colours mixed together, so the turquoisey and the orange, a little bit extra orange, um, to draw his legs because I think that will make a Decent enough colour for his legs. I think he's only got three, yeah, he's got three toes, hasn't he? I've given, nearly given him four there, we'll change that. So now a brighter mix of an orangey colour with more yellow in it this time. these feathers that are coming down this way and I'm not actually painting the feathers in I'm just blocking the colours in because we've got some of the feathery feeling with the pen underneath but if we just go in that direction and we leave some dry bits like we have there with the paper coming through that's going to give us the impression of some feathers same coming over there. Now these feathers on his back are a little bit redder than the ones further up so I'll get a little bit of extra red into the same mix and just put some darker bits in amongst them. And the other way around up here I'm going to get some extra yellow pop that in there and then for his face actually I think we need to take the yellow a little bit into his face goes around his eye there and then down here a little bit and into his beak but the rest of his face it's this pinky colour of his um, crown Don't worry if that runs a little bit into the other colours. That's part of the um, part of the style with this one. We want to leave it quite loose and watery. And the red goes all the way around his eye and his little beak. leaving a few white bits there because the sun, if you can actually see it, the sun is sort of hitting part of that. A 
Okay, so it looks quite handsome like that, but just to put some of these extra tones in and just to see how we get on with these ink tents, I'm now going to pop some of the ink, te ink, ink tents in. So just to, some extra lines in his tail to give us a little bit more movement in his tail with this nice dark green. And then a little bit extra where it's darker. And can you see how it's just sort of, because it's so wet, it just sort of melts into the watercolour. And that's actually enough, I think, there. We don't want to overdo it. And again, down here, just make him a little bit darker where, he's, where the shadow is. All this is in shade underneath his um, tummy here. And reinforce that line of his wing. And then again, that's enough. We don't want to overdo it. Now with the red, just put some extra shadows in here. Where there's folds in this little bit that goes along there. And, and make his crown extra extra bright so that's enough for that and then some orange like I said to go in this back bit here where it's a bit more ready on his back and that just bring that line back and some of those going to sort of merge into his tail as well so just merge those in and perhaps even put a couple of lines down here just to show where those feathers are going And then just to finish, it's very, very dark under here, so I'm just going to put an extra little bit of this dark blue. Some of the lines of his feathers there. And his leg isn't showing up that much, so I'm just going to get a bit of the brown and pop that in. Oh, that's quite nice. And that just shows his leg up a bit more. And if we want to put some on the ground there, that might just give us the impression of a little bit of ground somewhere. Okay, and I think that's enough because we don't want to overdo him. So just adding those little bit of ink tents in, just for one one thing it can really brighten the colour, uh, and for another it can just give you a little bit of definition with your, your shades um, and with some of your lines as well, putting those extra little few lines in. But like I say, we don't want them to overdo it, just keep it nice and simple. And if at any time it's going to dry and the ink tent isn't just merging in as you would like it to, just give it a little spray with your bottle and then start working again. Thank you for watching and if you want to have a look at more of my Inktense work and my mixed media work you can always have a look at my Instagram account because I put quite a few pictures on there as I'm working. If you would like any of the materials that I, I have used and you haven't got them there are links below in the description for the Inktense and the watercolours. Okay so thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that and if you've got any comments or suggestions please pop them down below. And I look forward to you joining me again soon for our next demonstration. Thank you. Bye for now.